Yay, you're on to the last part of level 1D, or level 1, we're on 1D. Okay, so we're still going to be combining like terms, still tidying up these expressions, but um, we're just going to look at them in a little more complex way. So if I look at this first one, I notice that I have to use the distributive property because I see that number next to the parentheses with that addition or subtraction inside. I just know that should automatically be a signal to you when you see something that looks kind of like that it has to have distributive property being used, okay? So before we can combine any like terms, we need to use the distributive property first here because we otherwise don't know what terms we might have to combine or not. Um, so we need to focus here. So if it helps you to underline, kind of like what we did with order of operations, if my line will show up, okay, um, this is the part I'm focusing on first. So we're just going to rewrite the 8a plus, and then we distribute 4 times 3 gives us 12, bring that minus with us, and then 4 times a gives us 4a. So now here's my expression, 8a plus 12 minus 4a. So I did that distributive first and just brought that 8a along with me, keeping all the symbols the same. So now I can combine like terms. So if I look, I have an 8a and a 4a, and so I know I can combine those. Where my lines go? Maybe they're not there. There we go, there's one. There we go, they're being a little sneaky on me. All right, so I know I can combine those two. So this is 8a, and I look in front of the 4a to know what I'm doing with it, and so I'm subtracting. So I get 4a, and then just bring that 12 with me, so 4a plus 12. So I bring that plus with the 12, because that's what it's in front of. Okay, so let's look at another one like that. So we need to do distributive first, because I'm noticing that number next to the parentheses and whatnot, and so we're focusing our attention here first. So we're going to do our 10 times 3 to get 30 plus 10 times m to get 10m, and then just bring that um, plus 6b with us. And then when I look at my new expression, I've got 30, I've got 10m, I've got 6b. None of those can be combined, so that stays exactly the way it is, okay? And that's important for us to distribute because when you look at it originally, you may not know if you need to combine something or not. So once you distribute, then it makes it very clear. And in this case, we didn't. All right, this looks like a lot going on, but let's just focus in. So first off, I see no parentheses or anything, so we do not need to distribute. But let's look at one term at a time. So I'm looking at 8xy. So I want to see if there's any other 8xy. I need x and y together. And when I look, I do see another one right here, a minus 5xy. So I'm going to take 8xy minus 5xy to get 3xy. Okay, so that's my first term. So then I look and I've got a 13 p squared w squared. That is a crazy term right there, but that is all one term, 13 p squared w squared. So I'm looking to see if I have any other of those, which I do, crazy enough. All the way down here, I have a 4 p squared and w squared. And so I'm going to take those. I'm going to do 13 p squared w squared plus 4 p squared w squared to get 17 p squared w squared. Wow, that's quite a mouthful. Okay, and then this poor plus 6 is all by its lonesome, but we're going to bring it along with us so it doesn't feel all by itself. So to, again, just to recap, 8xy minus 5xy to get me this 3xy, and then bring the addition sign with me because that's where I'm following along with left to right here. 13 p squared w squared plus 4 p squared w squared to get 17 p squared w squared. Um, and then I'm bringing that plus six along with me too. Don't want to forget about it. And that's as uh, simple as I can make this expression. Nothing else is in common, okay? All right, this last one here, we have kind of looked at this, but not completely. So r plus r, okay? That is like saying I have one r plus another r. So that's gonna give me two r. So there's um, a pair of terms we're gonna combine to get two r. But now here, the JJJ <laughs> is really J times J times J. So we're going to need to use a power for that one. And since I see my base, which is J in this case, be multiplied by itself three times, the power is going to be three. So my expression ends up being 2R minus J to the third, or J cubed. Okay, so when you see the var variables next to each other like that, remember that means multiplication. Sometimes there's a dot in between them too to show multiplication, um, but when they're next to each other, that's being multiplied, and so you need to use a power versus when they're being added, you just use a coefficient because you're just multiplying it by two versus multiplying itself three times, okay? Very different. All right, so you have some practice to go try. There's three problems. You need to check with the answer key and then get a quick check from your teacher before moving on to that level one assessment. You've got this. Go ahead and practice.